Hello guys and welcome back. So now we're going to continue and start implementing uh, everything we just saw onto our scene. And this is the fracture geometry we made together. Okay. And this is the one that, uh, let me turn this off. And this is the, uh, the one I made in the main project. And as you can see, the main difference here is that the front wall has uh, more pieces, but overall they're both very, very similar just this one has less uh, pieces here and again this is just something that we have to iterate over I'm gonna use the original geo so um, for consistency and so that I can try and get the same result at least here and um, and uh, I did set up few things main one is the uh, is this simple uh, sim which I'm still uh, making changes to and it's it's the this is the scene from week two and I had the dot network at the upper level I simply copied this and paste it inside uh, dot network and then I brought in my original Kong with the scale and everything and positioning and my spheres are not as good as the one we made together but I'm gonna use these guys so that's our uh, uh, sphere geo and then and then I scaled the geometry 20 times, so it's about 100 meter in terms of uh, width and about 60 or 50 in terms of height. And let's see. And I'm assembling it, uh, uh, packing it. It's already named and everything is ready. I, I don't have to do any of that. And then I connect the JSON top. And let's create a wrangle node and set few attributes, primarily the constraint name. And the constraint type. Okay, let's change this to primitive. And let's copy this. Actually, it's set up already. This is from the previous one. That's our constraint. And this is our Kong Geo. It's still pointing to the old one, so let's make the change and use the new one, which is here. And this guy, yeah, this guy is set up correctly. And let's set a few more attributes. So I want to set the uh, active attribute equal one. And let's make sure this is a primitive, yep. And let's group for you a few areas. Okay, let's call this inactive <coughs> pardon me and let's do one more copy and move it here and we're gonna union with existing and let's copy this and group is inactive and these guys are zero and let's set this to a thousand And let's save the file. Week three, V2. And let's hit play. Okay, everything seems to be working as expected. Okay, so I think, uh, yeah, I ran out of memory and the recording is probably interrupted at, at one point. So I'm going to pause for a second and I will uh, 
we open the scene again. So we're back and this is the uh, the scene that we just saved together. And it's creating graphs again. Okay, let's try and sim this again. And change this to flat shaded and let's hit play. Everything is working as expected. And I'm going to keep an eye on the memory usage. This is the total memory. And I have 64 gigabytes. I should need more than 32 in this case, but uh, who knows. Cool. So everything is working as it should be. And I'm gonna set up some more, uh, the constraint system that uses the mixed idea, the mixing between the glue and uh, the pin. And I wanted to show a feature in the viewport. So first of all, it's tinting. Houdini 17 has this tinting back faces and I'm gonna ignore that for for the time being so turn off tint back faces and with destruction you have to always use the either the colors to visualize or separate the pieces so you can see them but there's another helpful uh, option here called under boundaries I'm gonna change it from off to all views and this is going to show the boundaries of the of the geometry of the pieces and that's basically all the crack lines that we have which is cool okay so let's uh, continue and I'm gonna copy some stuff from the previous file that we did with the mixed constraint so these guys this setup I'm gonna copy all this and I'm gonna be copying stuff from the file I'll Whenever I do, I'll bring it, but everything uh, we've went through and created already. So let's change this here. I don't need this. And let's take a look at this. This guy. Okay, so first thing, I want to add a random color based on the seed number. So I'm going to create a random node and say it's a color. And let's connect that. This is going to show us how the pattern looks like. And then let's remove that. And then with the separation, we can see which one is which. So right now we have, um, we need to work a bit more on the pattern itself. So let me turn this off. I don't want to drive the frequency with the, with the noise yet. And let's take a look. It's really easy to see when we separate the the centers where the primitive uh, where the seed numbers isn't changed. This gives us a very good indication of uh, the cluster size. And let's go back in. Maybe increase the scale a bit. I don't want them to be too small. Two five. Two, two, something like that, and we're going to use that for for now. And now this is our we have pin constraint there, and then we have a uh, glue constraint everywhere else. Okay, so let's copy the bending as well from the this setup. So I'm going to copy all these guys. Let's go back here. And let's paste this. So we have pin and glue and let's let's set this to minus 1 for now. I don't want to break the glue constra the pin constraints at all. And let's connect the soft solver. And we're going to have to change a few things here. 
Now this uh, object, this path doesn't doesn't work anymore. So we need to change that to build destruction and then sim. And let's copy this. This is just the path to the DOP network. And then here, it's not G1, it's called build underscore destruction. That, and that should bring the RPD. And let's set some breaking rule. Let's increase this so it's easier to spot. And we also have this and I'm gonna keep that, it's fine. And let's take a look. Ground is quite big. Scale the ground down. Something like that. And let's hit play and see what we get. And this is all real time now. N not the speed, but I'm not caching or anything. It's all simming now. And um, from experience, if we didn't use this mixture, uh, this constraint mixing techniques, the sim time is going to be a lot slower than, uh, than what we currently have. And again, we're dealing with a lot of geometry here. Okay, it's working, and you can you can see this part. You can see the connectivity between everything. Cool. So it's definitely uh, bringing the, uh, it's, it's attracting and pushing the pieces as as we expect it to do. Yeah, this is definitely very, very cool. All the resistance here that we're getting is really cool. Okay, and then this part is breaking because the the threshold of that angle, we're meeting that threshold, threshold for the angle and it's causing everything to, uh, all the parts here to break. Now I'm gonna lower the glue constraint to Let's try. Let's try five thousand. I want to start uh, slow, uh, small first, and then we can increase it as we need to. I'm gonna. Okay. Let's hit play. And when, hopefully if the glue constraint breaks, we should see more separation here. I wasn't expecting this result, but let's see how it's going to behave. Yeah, it's working really nice here. It's looking pretty cool. Getting all this uh, deformation, this bending. And this thing is uh, just a viewport display. It's not the, the actual geometry. So in this case, uh, we need to do different 
multiple wedges and figure out what's the good angle, what's the right angle that we, uh, what's the right angle value that we need to use to get these guys to break and not just uh, deform like this. But I think we're very close already with these v values. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to lower this to a thousand and I'm going to go inside and lower uh, this to 0 0.025 and this I think is high so let's do 0 0.05 and I'm going to hit play and we'll continue in uh, in the next video cool thank you guys for watching and see you in a bit